So that's pretty much it for this section. Um, the next thing that I want to do is really go more and talk a little bit more about the Spring Web Tools that you would use for you know, just the general Spring Web Tools that, that you would use that are part of my Eclipse for Spring. And here I'm going to really focus in on Content Assist again, dependency graphs, and some of the annotation editors that are part of my Eclipse for Spring. But before we get into that, I really want to talk real briefly about the common layers. Um, one of the goals of my Eclipse for Spring has been to generate a functionally complete backend that can support many web UI implementations, and not just the user interfaces that are generated by my Eclipse for Spring but any user interface that you might want to build on top of a Spring backend. If you watched any of our previous MyClips for Spring scaffolding webinars or screencasts, you witnessed multiple UI implementations built on top of a common application layer. And a few minutes ago during the code generation review, I also showed you another example of multiple front ends that were being concurrently served by a single instance of the common application layers. The fact that the common application layers can support multiple web layer implementations is a testament to the quality of the implementation of the common layers. And that's not to say that out of the box it will handle every use case or every requirement that you may have, but you can be confident that you're starting with a very solid base that has been rigorously reviewed and vetted by Spring development experts. And after you finish generating, that's where the tools that I'm about to show you come into play. These rich tools are designed to assist you in tweaking the code artifacts that were generated or for creating entirely new uh, code artifacts from scratch. So let's jump back into my Eclipse for Spring and let me clean up a little bit here and close some of these projects. I don't think we'll need this project anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and close this project as well. I'm going to create a new project. And this time I'm going to create a new web project. And this project we'll call um, Beta Spring Web. And I'll click Finish. Um, and I will just accept the defaults here. And as, as is the case with most new projects, the first thing that I probably want to do is to configure it for Spring and or add uh, Spring libraries to it or add all the, you know, the Java libraries that I may, might need for it. Now, I can go in there and use the same facility that I used in my previous example, which is the add Spring capabilities, but I also am interested in adding JPA, Hibernate, and a few other libraries. So rather than having to use each of these menu items individually, what I can can do is actually use the add spring run dependencies uh, wizard and what this will do is it will give me the ability of adding multiple libraries all in one pass so before we get to that panel though the very first thing that this wizard is going to recognize is that this particular project does not have the spring nature applied and the spring nature is what's needed in order for me to be able to use the spring explorer uh, you know within my you know for this particular project so by default we are going to enable it for you, but if for some reason you don't want to use this, the Spring Nature, then you can go ahead and disable it there. And the next panel will actually show you a list of all the libraries that are available for you to add to this project. So in one pass, and the libraries will change a little bit depending on whether you're doing Spring 2.5 or Spring 3.0 development. Um, and uh, what you do is just pick all the libraries that you want, and then you have a couple of choices to make here. Just like in the previous wizard, where you have the ability of choosing whether you want to add, just add these to your build path, or do you want to actually copy these libraries into your project, you can make that selection here. Um, for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and have it use the copy of the libraries that exist within my workspace. I'm going to click finish here, and real quick, um, within a moments, all the libraries have been added to my project, they're in my build path and I can immediately expand them and see the individual libraries that, 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 that those packages are comprised of. And then if I want to remove them or add new libraries or add additional libraries, I can certainly do that, of course. Um, I, really, I want to real briefly also show you how this works with a Maven project. So if I go in here, um, we're taking a slight deviation here, but if I go and create a Maven project, let me call it Beta Spring Web Maven. Um, Quick finish, and if we take a look at this project, we'll see that the pom file is actually pretty. Um, there's really not very much in it. Um, basically, it's a very basic pom file. Um, but what I want to do is for this project, I want to actually add uh, all of those libraries as well. So I can use the same mechanism. We go, we go, we we put a lot of effort into making sure that the wizards work for both Maven projects as well as standard Eclipse projects, so that you don't uh, have a different experience depending on how what types of projects you're using within my Eclipse for Spring. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and add the spring runtime dependencies. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, add the nature. I'm going to just add a couple libraries in this case. I'll pick Spring MVC, Spring Security, and Spring Webflow, and Spring Core. Uh, well, one of the things you'll notice is that the library, this it doesn't ask me whether I want to copy the libraries or whether I want to use ClassPath containers. It's what it's actually going to do here is actually going to add them using the mechanism that is appropriate for Maven Project, which is to actually add them to the POM file. So within just a few moments, uh, this will be added to my POM file, and we'll take a look at the POM file here in just in just a section, in just a second. Um, and uh, oh, I really didn't point that out. That you know, I think Jack kind of pointed this out a little bit, which is that that um, my Eclipse for Spring does have Maven support built in, so there's no additional plugins necessary to use Maven. Um, and one of the cool things that it includes is the Maven Palm editor which uh, gives you a mechanism for actually modifying your POM files. If I go to the very last tab, it'll show me what the POM file looks like on my file system. And we'll, you'll notice that the properties were added, that several repositories were added to the POM file, and a pretty long list of dependencies. Um, that list is going to be comprised of the lists that I selected in the wizard. So um, anyway. That's how the, uh, that's, oh, and then there's a couple other tools here like the dependency graph, which there's a bunch of really cool tools here to help you troubleshoot, you know, dependency conflicts that you might have within your project, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, if, you're, if you're a Maven user, these are def def definitely something I encourage you to check out. Um, so that's, that's it for Maven. Let me go ahead and close this project. Um, and let's go back to the original project. So for this, I'm actually going to generate that common application layer. I'm really not interested in generating any front end for this part of the uh, for this for this part of the webinar. So I'm going to use the scaffold spring crud application um, menu item. And what this is going to do is going to pull up the scaffolding wizard. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm not going to go in through a lot of details. I'm going to go through this wizard very quick. Once again, we've covered this extensively in other webinars and in other screencasts. But so I'm going to generate from a database. I'm going to use the MyClips Derby database. I'm going to specifically use some tables that exist in the classic car schema, specifically the customer and payment tables. I'm going to specify that I want customer to be my, my top level, my parent object. I'm going to specify a base package, which will be, we'll just call it org.beta. And I'm going to uncheck this because I don't want to generate a web layer for this particular example. I'm only interested in generating the common layer, which is the service layer, the DAO layer, and the domain layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It's going to ask me where to, where I want to generate this to, what context file I want to use. I'm just going to click Finish. And within a few moments, the, um, the common layers will be generated for me that uh, I can then use as a starting point for building a front end, or if I want, I can go back through the wizard and generate a front end as well, um, one of the supported front ends that, that MyClips for Spring generates. So the project is done generating. Um, I have all my libraries, all my source code is within this generated folder. You can see we break it out by layer, so we have our service layer, our persistence layer, and our domain layer in here. And um, because this, the Spring Nature was added to the project, it shows up here in my Spring Explorer. And one of the things you'll notice in this example is that we have multiple context files. So one of the best practices for Spring development is to actually have a separate context file per application layer. And so we have one here for the service layer and the persistence layer. And we also have one for, for Spring Security. Um, and uh, what I want to do is I want to expand this out. Let's take a look at the uh, outline view, and you'll see that there are a whole bunch of configurations that have been added to that, that context file. And I can right-click on this and say open it in the dependency graph, and here I get a graphical view of all of those dependencies as well. So uh, this is a more complex example, obviously, than what we looked at before.